Hello there, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop Elements and Photoshop Touch. In this video, I'll be answering a reader question who asked how they can do skywriting in Photoshop. Well, let's jump in and have a look. So here I am, I'm all ready to go. I've created a very simple background just by going to Filter and Clouds, Render Clouds. There we go, with white as my foreground colour and blue as my background colour. So what I'd like to do is create a heart shape with I Love Tip Squirrel written on the front of it. So let's see how that's done. First things first, I need to get my heart shape. I'm going to use the custom shape tool. You can see I've already chosen the heart. If you haven't got a heart in here, if you click on this gear at the top right hand corner and select all, all your shapes will come up and heart will be in there somewhere. I'm also going to make sure that this is set to path. Now what I need to do is click and drag it out. I'm going to use the space bar to move it into position and the shift key to constrain it when I've let go of the space bar. So there we go, nice, reasonably big heart slightly off center and there you go. Now I need to make this smoky. I'm going to use brush for that. So let's go and get a brush and have a look at our brush dynamics. Well, I'm going to use a very soft round brush and I'm going to use some of the shape dynamics and the scattering to help me make it smoky. So in the shape dynamics, let's look at the size jitter already just by turning this on, you can see that I'm getting something pretty good. The size jitter will change the size of each brushstroke as it goes around. The minimum diameter will make sure it doesn't go too small. I want to come up to about here. Now the angle jitter and the roundness jitter doesn't make any difference at the moment because it's round anyway. The last thing I need to look at is control. And I'm going to turn this off for now. I may turn it on again a little bit later. Next down, scattering. And again, we have an instant kind of representation here. The scattering, as you can see, changes this quite dynamically. I don't want it to go too far, but I do want it to be scattered slightly. The count will be just how much is scattering it out. And well, I want it to be quite full. The count jitter, will again, change the dynamics of this. And about there is it going to be okay. I'm just going basically by what I can see on the representation down the bottom. Let's go to brush tip shape and make sure we've got a good size to this brush. I'm going to look around about 30-ish. There we go, 31 is fine. I can also take a look at the spacing should I wish. I don't really want to go too far, but I can space it out if I wanted to make it look a bit better. About there is fine. This is a lot of this is going to be trial and error really because each time you do it you may draw things slightly different size. Okay, let's close that down and create a new layer to draw on. And I'm going to call this heart. H -E -A -R -T. Next I'm going to click on paths. And if you haven't got your paths palette as part of your workspace, if you go to window and paths, it'll pop up somewhere. All I have to do now is right click on the work path. Let's make sure it's visible. Right click and then stroke the path. I do want to do it with the brush. I've just set that up. If a brush isn't there, then you can find it as part of this drop down menu. And at the moment, I don't want to simulate pressure. Let's click OK. And sure enough, round it goes and creates a quite a nice, sort of smoky, cloudy kind of heart shape. Now the line you can see in the middle is the work path. This won't print out, but it can be a bit distracting. So I'm just going to click off the work path here, just so as I can't see it. Let's go back to layers and then on my heart layer, double click. This will bring up layer styles and we can give this a bit more of a better cloud effect. At the moment, it looks like it's kind of burnt in, doesn't it? So on the bevel and emboss to start with, we don't want to do too much of this. I want this to be quite soft, but we're trying to just give the edges a bit of a, a darkness to it, just to make it a bit three-dimensional. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the shadow here, just to bring it down, because my next one is going to be in a shadow, which is going to do both edges 
and I don't want the bevel shadow to be too strong. I'm going to bring that right down again. I'm just trying to take away some of the glow from it, really. And then finally, pattern overlay. Now, that's a bit ghastly, but if I click on this downward facing arrow, I can find clouds. Now, although we're not using it as clouds, it does give a nice texture. I can scale this to quite small to quite big, and I want it to around about there, let's say. We can always come back and change that. I'm going to reduce the opacity, and it's just going to give it a bit of depth to it. There we go. And so now we have a nice cloud heart. Let's click OK. Next, let's have a look at the text. I'm going to go and get my text tool and click somewhere down on the canvas. Now you'll see that I'm using MV Bowley at about 111 points. This will depend on the resolution of your image, of course, and whether you find a better font or not. I'm going to type out Tip Squirrel. I'm doing it all as caps. Let's just move this into position with the Move tool, although we will be moving these around in just a second. Now we can use the same technique as we did with the heart on these letters, but we need it as a path. So let's go up to Type and Create Work Path. And sure enough, a path comes around. Now in CS5 and before, you'll find that somewhere slightly different. And I'll be honest, my memory isn't that good, but I think it's somewhere under edit. All right, let's turn off this layer, the visibility of this layer at least. And now you can see our path sticking out quite nicely. And there it is within our paths palette as the work path. Now this is a bit too perfect for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here and use these two arrows, the path selection tool and the direct selection tool. Let's use the path selection tool first. And if I click on one of these letters, I'm going to change it independently of all the others. So I can actually move this around and I can also control T to transform it. So I can just turn this slightly. I can make it bigger. That'll do me. Let's pop that up there somewhere for now. Click the tick. Good. I'm going to move the I somewhere around there. That'll do. Next comes the P. I'm going to transform that and turn it slightly for no particular reason, except I just want to randomize it a bit. And click the tick. Now I want to bring this kind of bit down here, down a little bit, just to just mess it up a bit, really. So I can use the other arrow, the direct selection tool. Let's click off that path so that I can make a selection around the bit I want to change. So it's just selected these points down the bottom. So now I can take them and I can bring them down. Let's click off that path, see how it looks. Good. And let's go back to the path selection tool. Let's move the S and I might work along these very similar style. Oh, I've caught the middle there. Very similarly as the ones I've just done. Maybe I'd like to change the S slightly. So get that one. I don't want to bore you too much by changing these. So let's just do I like that? A bit wavy in the middle. Let's see what it looks like. Um, on the Q, I definitely want to change the Q, this bottom part of the Q, because when I've been doing this previously to work it out, it was causing me all kinds of pain. So let's take that one away. And let's go and into the path selection. Now, I might put this on speed up just to save you having to watch this too long. I'll see you in just a second. I'm going to sit here and play for a while. OK, I have my letters. And you may have noticed I've changed the R's because there's two together. I wanted them to look different. I've also changed the Q because it made me cross earlier and the U just to random it up a bit. So there we go. Um, I'm all ready to go. So I need to stroke this path again. Now, unlike the heart, which had one path that just went all the way around, the letters have got one path that actually doubles up. So it's going to stroke it down here then it's going to stroke it down the other side. So I want a smaller brush. Let's go and get my brush settings again. And this time, just bring the size down. So let's bring it down to maybe 15-ish. Let's go 12 to 15, 12 is fine. Let's give that a try. So right click, whoop. Now that doesn't work because you'll notice it's grayed out. 
that's because it's got nowhere to put it. So let's go back to layers and create a new layer. And then we'll go back to paths, right click, that's better, straight the path, with the brush, no simulate pressure, click OK. And then click off. And there we are. That's OK. I could do with it just being a little bit bigger. I'm going to be a bit pedantic on this and just have it just a little bit bigger. I, I said 12 to 15. I should have gone with my first instinct, 16. There we are. Straight the path with brush. OK. OK, that's a bit better. I like that a little bit better. I've still got some gaps, but that's OK, because if I go back to layers, I can then come onto this layer and I need to change the shape dynamics. I need to turn them off. Otherwise, I'm going to get brushes of different sizes. That can be a bit frustrating. Believe me, it can. And I can just go and fill these in and make sure that I've got... I don't mind a few gaps, but I don't want too many. All right, there we go. Now again, we just need to give this a little bit of the effect. So double click it. Bevel and emboss. Nice and soft. Then our inner shadow. Not too much. And then our pattern overlay. Yuck, clouds, reduce the opacity. And I want to take this, scale this quite high, I think, on this one. There we go. And that's looking good. That's not too bad. Now you can see that the effects have gone into the gap, so I can really see them now. So I'm going to come back onto this one, and I'm going to fill these in, and you can see that it's taking away the bevel and emboss from it, as well as the, uh, the inner shadow, etc. as well. And that's going to be a bit better. OK. Now, you may be saying, well, if you're going to do this anyway, why didn't you just write it using a graphics pen? I've done that too. If you're good at drawing, then go for it and then just add the effects. Me, I can't draw for toffee, so I have to use everything that Photoshop has to help me along the way. OK, that's not too bad at all. Now, of course, I need to make sure that the aeroplane has written it all, which means he had to go from one letter to the next. Now, some of them are already touching, but you see here the T to the I. Let me just turn this heart off. The T to the I isn't joined, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to join it for the for him for the aeroplane, um, and you can see that it's keeping all the bevel and emboss as well. So that's kind of helpful. Where it is already joined, I'm going to make sure that it's quite accentuated. The Q to the U, I'm going to bring up. Um, let's go and get those shape dynamics back again, so as we get a nice rough brush when I'm doing this, that's better, and then bring the I down here to the R, R to the R, R to the E, E to the L. Good. Now let's get the aeroplane on and off and I'm going to use the pen tool. So very simple this. Get the pen tool, click somewhere off screen and then on the T, for me it's a T obviously, you could be writing something differently, but I'm going to click at the top of the T and then kind of stretch this out so it comes in at the bottom. And it should give us a nice effect then, come in nice and straight. So let's go on over to the paths. There's our new work path. Our brush needs to be bigger again because this time it's just brushing the once. Let's bring that up. Right click, stroke the path. And there we go. Is that too much? I think it is, don't you? Control Z. Let's bring the size down, right click, stroke the path, that's better. Let's click off the path so we can see it. There we go, that's better. Then let's go from the L, so we're going to get the pen tool again, from the L and off screen. Right click, stroke the path, we know it's going to be okay this time. There it goes. So now we've written tip squirrel in the sky and we've got our heart. Good stuff. Now I'm not going to make you watch me write I love Tip Squirrel. So let's just finish this off now. Let's put the heart back on. And what I'd like to do to finish this off is have smoke swooping in and then have an aeroplane here, the aeroplane that wrote it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and get my pen tool again and I'm going to come about here-ish, click and then off screen and give it a nice kind of curl there. I'm going to create a new layer for this. 
because I may want to move it independently from the heart and the tip squirrel. And I'm going to go to my paths. I'm going to right click and stroke the path, but this time I do want to simulate pressure. If I click OK, you'll notice that nothing different has changed. So let's control Z. And the reason for that is if I go back in here, remember a little while ago, I didn't have my shape dynamics on anyway, by the looks of it. I said it, uh, you may remember a little while ago in the shape dynamics, I turned control to off. Let's select pen pressure. And you see, we get this nice thin to thick to thin going on. I'm also going to make this quite a bit bigger, something like that. Now, if I stroke the path and I keep the, the simulate pressure, OK, you see it goes thin to thick, and then the thin bit is actually off the screen. OK, let's click off that. Now, all I need to do is put some effects on it, and we already know how we're going to do that. So let's go and do that very quickly. Soften. OK. A little bit more this time bring the opacity down. I could have saved this, of course, as a default. Let's go and put the inner shadow in, reduce the opacity, and then pattern overlay, and we'll give it clouds, yuck, nice and big, bring down the opacity. Good, and there we have our smoke coming in. I just go and get my aeroplane. Now I downloaded this aeroplane from the Photolia stock image website. And all I've got to do then is put that on. It's going to come in as a smart object. Let's size that to about where I want it. That's going to be about good. Click the tick. And then I'm going to use the magic wand tool. Just click around, hold down shift so as I can add to my selection. I'm making a very quick rough and ready selection. And then I can press Alt and mask just to mask it out. Let's move this into position just like that. And there we have it. I'm going to add the I love into the tip squirrel. And where was that? Was that this layer here? Yeah, we better now rename that, hadn't we? Tip squirrel. I can bring this down. I can move it independently. Of course, I'd have to worry about the smoke on the left and the right hand side. But I'm going to put I love on the top there. And then I'm just going to use exactly the same technique as I did for the tip squirrel. My name's Eric Renault. Thank you very much for watching. You can find more from me and some other writers at tipsquirrel.com. It is 100% free. All we ask is that you share what you like. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye for now.